Good evening. I wanted for us to continue our discussion of the book of Psalms. I find that it's a book that has a lot of beautiful poetry, a lot of um, beautiful choruses, and uh, shares a lot about human experiences, times of trouble, times of distress, times of going through difficulties in life, and how we handle it. Like I mentioned before, I like many of the courses that come out from the Psalms. One of them, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd. Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence cometh my help. Evening and morning and noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he will hear my voice. Then I will call upon the Lord. Then the Psalm of David in Psalm 51, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Then, of course, also, when it says, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. We spoke about how to have peace in the midst of the storm. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you we are facing a very difficult storm. But what's reassuring to know is that in the midst of our storm, that Jesus is in the boat with us. He promised never to leave nor forsake us. And our first psalm we spoke about last Wednesday night was from Psalm 37. I like that psalm. And it highlights a number of things. I just want to review them with you. First of all, the psalmist said to us, fret not. It talks about the state of mind. What are we fretting about? Fretting about our job, fretting about the future, fretting about the past, fretting about the children, fretting about money, the weather, whether we're gaining weight. We can fret about a lot of things, but also we need to learn how to trust God. Is there a state of state of mind? Fret not. State of confidence is to trust God. Isaiah tells us in Isaiah 12 about trusting God. Psalm 27, 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Someone says, The time we take to worry, 80% of the time nothing is going to affect us. 10% of the time hardly. Our real concern is about 10%. So why, why fret when you can trust God? Then of course we talk about delighting ourselves in the Lord, a state of joy. All of us are facing a lot of discouraging moments and things that are going on around us. But we have a choice. We can choose to praise God, delight ourselves. We can choose to dance over our defeat, or we can just accept and accede to, to, to defeat. Then we talked about committing our ways to God in verse number five, the state of release. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge the Lord, and he shall direct thy path. In Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Jesus said, into thy hand I commend my spirit. It's best to be in the hand of God. That's the best hand to be in this afternoon. And then we talk about a state of rest, state of relaxing. Stress will send up your blood pressure, will give you a stroke, will get you sick. We can choose to stress and get uptight, or we can trust and rest in the Lord. Then the Bible says also cease. It says state of solitude. Cease from anger. Some people have to cease from going shopping. Your social life is hampered. But I want to encourage you that don't let, because things have ceased, allow you to get angry and to get discouraged. So the songwriter says, I have peace like a river. Peace like a river. I have peace like a river in my soul. I trust this afternoon that you'll have the peace of God 
in your soul. You will not fret. You will trust. You will delight yourself in God. You will commit your ways to Him. Rest in the Lord and cease from anger. The other psalm I chose this afternoon for meditations from Psalm 46. Psalm 46, and I'd like to read a few of the verses for you. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Fearful will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, a stream, whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Take a moment right now to be still. Take a deep breath. Exhale. How to have peace in the midst of the storm. First of all, Psalm 46 starts off by saying, God, God, not just anyone, but God. God, first of all, I want to remind you that God is on your side. The Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? God is with you. Emmanuel, God with us. God is with you. He said at this time, Pastor, yes, God is with you. Even in this time, God is with you. Even though I don't know where my next meal is coming from, or I'm going to pay the rent, or I'm going to pay the mortgage, or I'm going to make it true I have no food in the cupboard, I still want to say that God is with you. God, the creator of the ends of the earth. The eternal God is still your refuge. Underneath are his everlasting arms, and his banner over you is love. The all-wise God, omniscient God, God who is, who knows the beginning from the end. The omnipresent God, he is present, he is with you. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. The eternal God. The miracle working God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the covenant keeping God, the God who Moses asked when he went down into Egypt, who should he tell them, send him? Told him to tell them, I am that I am. I want to say that God is still God, and he always will be God. He's a God of all gods. He's the Lord of all lords. He's the King of all kings. He's the Holy One of Israel. And He's God all by Himself. You can trust Him this afternoon. So the psalmist opens up and tells us how to have peace. The way to have peace is to have the Prince of Peace have God with you this afternoon. Then he says, God is. Not past tense, not in the future, but God is. Not God was, or God might, or God could, or God perhaps. God is. He is your strength. He is your rock. 
He is your fortress. And Psalmist went on for to say, not only is God is, but he is our God. It speaks of personal possession, our God. Our God. He said the, the Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Father, our God, mine, my God, Abba Father. I want to say this afternoon, it makes a difference that God is our God, and we are children of God. And because we are children of God, we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He's not only our God, but he's a refuge. He's a refuge. He's our shelter, our protector. He's our hiding place. We can run to him for shelter right now. The storms of life are raging. You can run to him. He's our hiding place. So our writer says, Thou art a hiding place. Thou covers me. And so this afternoon, we thank God that he is our refuge, a place we can run to, the rock that we can run to this afternoon. He's not only a refuge, but he's also our strength. Isaiah 40 says in 31, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I want to encourage you at this time, take time to pray and wait upon God. Get your family together. Pray together. Call upon the Lord. Call somebody else. The Bible says, if two of you shall agree as touching anything in the name of the Lord, it shall be done. Yes, gain strength by praying together. We have the prayer line on Friday night. Get on board. Good Friday, we have prayer sessions. Check with the brethren and get time of prayer. This is the way we get strength. Strength comes by waiting in the presence of the Lord. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. He giveth more grace. God will give you more grace and more strength that you need for your journey. He's not only our refuge and strength, but he's also very, means definitely, or we can be assured or confident, very help. He's only very, but he's also very present. I want to say that whatever we are going through, God is not absent. God is present in your situation. Whatever we are facing, we all are facing, He's there. He would not abandon His people. He would stay with us through thick and thin. He's present. Thank God for His presence that goes before us, that is with us, in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible also speaks of the fact that he's a present help. So I'm right, it says, all of my help cometh from the Lord. My help is in the Lord. The Bible says, call upon me and I will answer thee and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He's my help in the time of trouble. All of us face it. We can't run from it. We face trouble. But I want to thank God this afternoon. The Bible says His grace is sufficient for us. And in our weakness, His strength is made perfect. He is with us. So the Bible says God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in, in the trouble. He is in trouble with us. He is in the midst. Reminds me of the, the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. He was in the midst of the fire with them. He was with Daniel in the lion's den. God is in our midst this afternoon. Brethren, take comfort knowing that God is in the midst. He is not absent. He's not on a journey. He's not far away, but he's in the midst. The Lord our God in the midst of us is mighty. 
Thank God he's in the midst. When the disciples were in that ship, he was in their midst. And if your ship right now is out there and it's tossing back and forth, Jesus is in the midst of it all. And he still speaks. He still, the winds and the waves still obey him. So he's in the midst of you. Then the psalmist went on and says, Therefore, whenever we see the words, the wherefore or therefore, it means that it's telling us that in spite of whatever happens before, we can be confident and trust in God. So therefore he's saying, Therefore, knowing God is our refuge and strength, knowing that God is our help and He's present, we will not have to be afraid. We can afford to put our will, to put our lives in the hand of the Lord, knowing that God is going to see us through. The Bible says there, therefore will we, one will put a thousand to flight, but two shall put ten thousand to flight. Let's come together as a church. Yes, unite together. Call up the brethren. Form a prayer chain. Call somebody, pray with them, ask them to call someone else and let them pray. And let's, let's continue as a church. We don't have to be at 131 Sullivan to have church and to unite ourselves together. We are learning through these times here that how we can still stay connected. Pray with one another. Set a time every morning. Maybe you and your spouse pray. Your children before they start their school on the internet. Pray for them, pray with them. Those who still have to go to essential service, pray with them before they leave the house. Cover them with the blood. Pray for those that are sick. Pray for the bereaved families. Yes, pray one for another. We are going to come together and unite ourselves together as the Church of Jesus Christ. As we unite together, we know there is victory and when we pray together. One would put a thousand to flight, but two would put ten thousand to flight. If we will we not fear, we will not, no, we would not fear. Fear would not paralyze us. Fear had torment. And where there is fear, you can't have faith and fear together. Fear not, he says, I am with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Say, so, Pastor, I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand a lot of what is going on either. But I know one thing. I've trusted God for my teenage years. And God has been a faithful God over all these years. When I was single, God was faithful. When I got married, God was faithful. When I had my first child, God was faithful. When God blessed me with a family, He was faithful. When God called me to the ministry, He was faithful. God has blessed us over these 40 plus years. He's been faithful. All I know is that I've put my trust in God over the years, different times, different circumstances, different conditions, and God has been a good God. Yes, we may suffer for a while. We may be hard pressed. We may go through difficulties. We may face pain. We may face sickness and disease, loneliness, discouragement, despondency, despair, downcast, but at the end of the day, God is still God. And I want to encourage you, do not cast away your confidence, for it has a great recompense of reward. I can't tell you what tomorrow is going to bring forth, but the songwriter says, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't worry over its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry over the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside them, for he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. God is holding your hand, my brother, my sister, my friend, my fellow pastor, members of Full Gospel, friends of the ministry. God is holding your hand. Do not be afraid. Let the peace of God reign in your heart. Look up. Trust God. Pray. Keep your faith. Encourage yourself in the Lord. I know it's not easy. 
I know it's stressful. I know it's challenging. We are treading waters we've never gone through. We're experiencing things we never experienced in this life. At the end of the day, God knows all things. He sees the beginning from the end. And I believe that He is working out His purpose. Many of us are going to get stronger in our faith. We learn to trust God more. I pray for those of you who do not know the Lord. I want to encourage you, my friend. Surrender your life to Jesus. Life is filled with uncertainty. 9-11, I remember, after 9-11, the church was packed and filled with people. But as people got comfortably bent back into their routine, I want to encourage you this afternoon. This is a time to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Surrender your life to Jesus. Give your heart to the Lord. Let Jesus come into your heart. To the saints of God, let's pray one for another. I appreciate those of you who have called and prayed. Those of you who are calling one another. Give one another a word of encouragement. Pray it one another. That God will bless us and keep us all in the love of God. So God bless you this afternoon. And be encouraged. Keep looking up. God is able and he'll bring you through, is my prayer. God bless you, and have a good evening in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father, we bow our hearts before you. Give us peace in the midst of the storm. Help us to know that God is still a refuge, and that you are still a present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we do not have to be afraid. The God of Jacob is with us. You are watching over us every step we take. I pray for those who do not know you as their Savior. I'm going to ask you to pray the sinner's prayer. Dear God, I ask you today to come into my heart. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. I accept you as my Savior from this day forward. Thank you for doing it and for blessing me today. In Jesus' name, and Lord, I thank you for blessing the rest of the congregation, meeting all their needs, Lord. Watch over your people, near and far, I pray. I ask it in no other name, but in the name of Jesus, our Savior, and our coming King, I pray. Amen and amen.